Hey everyone, welcome to this course on REST API testing with Postman, I am Bijan. And I'll be taking you through different uh, API topics, right, specifically on REST API. We'll be also looking at um, all of the Postman features which are uh, currently available. And we'll also see how you can test your REST APIs using the Postman tool, right? So before we start, if you're new to this YouTube channel, please subscribe to our channel QA script. We post videos on a regular basis. And if you don't want to miss out on any new video, then subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified automatically on a YouTube page every time we post a new video. It's pretty easy to find our channel. Just type QA script on the YouTube search and you will go to our uh, QA script page, YouTube page, and there you can click on the subscribe button. So starting off, we'll be looking at a basic introduction to API. What is an API, right? Different types of APIs which are available. And then we'll look at what is web services API, okay? So what is an API? It stands for Application Programming Interface. In layman terms, API is something which helps two systems to interact with each other, right? So you can call it a set of definitions or protocols through which you can build and integrate different application softwares, right? It provides you a way of interaction between your different software intermediaries, right? Now, what are the advantages of using an API? It provides you with flexibility, right? So it simplifies your overall design and it helps you with administration and different types of use, right? It also, um, you can open up access to your different resources, right? While maintaining uh, uh, strict security and control over your applications and APIs. So, uh, a simple example could be your company has different APIs which are sitting on your backend servers, right? And then you have these uh, front-end applications like your web applications, IoT devices, or mobile applications which are which need to access these APIs, right? So you cannot directly expose your backend servers to these systems, but through API management system which sits in between these APIs, backend service APIs, and your applications, right? Your front-end applications can access all the backend, backend system APIs in order to perform the required operations, right? So API helps you in, com in communicating between your different applications and your back backend service APIs. Right? So this is a simple example. Um, there could be a lot of, uh, resources which could be made available to either outside world or your different applications through an API, right? So that's where you use an API. Now coming to different types of API, the most popular one is the web API, right? Or it's also called the web services API. These APIs can be accessed over internet using the HTTP protocol, right? You, it, it defines endpoints and it has a valid request and response type, right? So mostly uh, they use either the XML or JSON um, files to transmit information between the server and the client, right? Now, the other APIs can be categorized into the open APIs, which are completely open or partially open to, to the outside world, right? They may require some registration before you can use them um, by the use of an, you can either generate an API key or an OAuth key to use these APIs, right? A very good example could be the Google APIs, which exposes its different services to the to different developers, right? Who can integrate these APIs to um, build their own applications, right? So the you, you can access the Gmail or the Google Maps API or any, any other Google service, right? Basically, you just need to uh, go through a registration process where you need to generate a OAuth key with your application and the Google API, which you're trying to use. 
and then um, you can use the APIs to build your own application, right? So it's a good example of an open API. Now partner APIs, uh, these are basically between uh, companies who are partners of some other company, right? So these are not, these APIs are not publicly available and they need specific entitlements to access them, right? Now coming to other two types, which are internal APIs, Right. They are completely hidden from external users and they can only be exposed by internal systems. So these are basically used by internal teams of an organization to either build, test or modify their existing APIs. Right. Now, coming to the last one, which is composite APIs. They are a combination of multiple data or service APIs, right? So a good example could be a microservices architecture where you need access to different APIs or services to perform a single task. Okay. So these are the different types of API which you will come across while working on development or testing APIs. Coming to web services API, uh, we already talked about it, but it is a service through which different systems can communicate with each other over the internet, right? Now, in a web service, the protocol used is HTTP and HTTP uses these different file types or machine readable uh, file formats such as XML or JSON to transmit information between the client and server, right? Now, an important point to remember here is every web service is an API, right? So web service is a form of an API, but every API is not necessarily an web service. It can be a different API. Okay. Now there are two most popular types of web service APIs, right? One is the REST API and the SOAP API. So we are going to look at both of them. Before that, so this is um, a simple diagram which explains you what is a web service API, right? So there is a client, there is a server. Now the client sends a request to the server, right? Through the HTTP protocol over internet and the server responds back to the client in a machine readable format, right? Which the client can process. Now it could be in the form of JSON or it could be form of XML. Now the client needs to, um, the client should be able to uh, process this information and use it uh, on its own applications, right? So this is how web service work. Now, if you want to look at an example of web services API, a popular one is one of the travel websites, Make My Trip, right? Now Make My Trip has its own API through which um, it can interact with other APIs, right? So for example, whenever you enter some information on its flight search, right? You enter the from and the to destination and you enter the departure date, the return date, the passenger information, and you click on search, right? So what happens when you click on search? So the Make My Trip API, it connects with other, a other flight APIs, right? There are different flight companies who, uh, which are hosting their own APIs on different servers. So Make My Trip sends a request to this, all these servers, right? Air India, Indigo, based on the search criteria, right? So it sends uh, this search criteria information to the server and the server um, server uh, processes that request and sends a response back to the make my trip, right? So based on the response, it then displays all the necessary information or the flight details from different flight companies on its web page. Right. So that is how Make My Trip is able to gather all this information from different flight companies. It's through the web services API. Right. So this is a good example of uh, web services API, which you can remember. Then coming to the so in the next uh, in the next topic, we'll be looking at REST API, right? So what is REST API, REST API methods, and SOAP versus REST API.